So, uh, news today. We got a lot of it. The uh, hurricane also affected ratings, although uh, that's the least of the issues with the hurricane. But Dynamite, 990,000 viewers on TBS, down 4.7%. First time the show's been below a million since August 17th. Uh, 0.34 and 18 to 49. And of course, if you look at the cable charts, Weather Channel, Weather Channel, Weather Channel, Weather Channel, Weather Channel. Top seven spots in 18 to 49. So uh, if you exclude the Weather Channel, uh, Dynamite would be second to Tucker Carlson Fox News, which I would suspect was also talking about the hurricane. So uh, I would not read too much into these numbers. Obviously, don't go on my timeline. Numbers fine. Uh, what happened was the show started. It was not like the last few weeks where it's been like a razor straight line throughout the show. It started big, 1.2 million, and uh, just began to decline. And for about an hour, from 9:30 to 10:30, it was uh, right around a million. And then 9:30 uh, or 10:30 to 11:30, it uh, lost several hundred thousand viewers. And uh, I don't think. That it's, uh, you know, 100,000 people were all in South Florida and lost power. But I, I did hear from several people that were there. And they all said, we lost power right after the uh, the women's segment. Which is, in fact, where there was a steep decline. So I think that would have been a small part of it. But I don't think that's, that's the entire deal. But those are your dynamite numbers. And uh, nothing to worry about. Let's not all freak out, right? No, no, the I'm sky not. is obviously falling. It is. Uh, I think they agree. The sky is not falling, sure. Mike. Don't, oh. don't scare people. Uh. Next Wednesday's dynamite, Mike. Mm. They will have an extended runtime. Oh yeah. Tony Khan announced today the October fifth edition will be fifteen minutes longer than usual. It is the show's. The Dynamite three-year anniversary episode. It will air till 10.15 p.m. Tony Khan said to celebrate three years, the Dynamite anniversary show has 15 minutes extra runtime. Two hours and 15 minutes total. Bet all the belts live next Friday after a live rampage. I still haven't figured that one out. Thank you, WBD, for the anniversary next week. We've got Brian Danielson and Daniel Garcia versus Jericho and Sammy Guevara. MJF versus Wheeler Yuta. Luchasaurus will be in action. That damn dinosaur. Darby Allen versus Jay Lethal. And National Scissoring Day with the acclaimed and Billy Gunn. Well, that's obviously why they need the extra 15 minutes for the scissoring segment. I don't know how long that's going to need. Well, you may need it to be a little bit after 10 p.m. because you never know what could happen during a scissoring segment. It could get a little wild. Well, actually, I do know what could happen. Oh, yeah? I don't know You've if it's been a part be of a some scissoring full situations scissoring in your past. Uh, session here. So, uh, also, Hurricane Ian affected NXT as, uh, you know, there were several people down there as part of NXT that lost power, just now getting power restored. The power is being restored to the Performance Center today. And NXT will be live again next Tuesday. Two weeks of taped shows. And as I had figured, one of the reasons they did two weeks of taped shows was uh, kind of redoing the set. Because the old NXT 2.0 is gone. There is a new NXT 3.0, but they're not calling it that. They're going back to the gold. It's gold and white this time. And they are redoing the set, okay? But I have been told it is not... Although when you think about it, I don't even know what this means. We're going to find out Tuesday. It's not as drastic as the change to 2.0. I don't think it could be. If you guys saw the changeover from NXT to NXT 2.0, you probably couldn't have a more drastic change. I guess if you would have put the ring like on the ceiling and everybody had to like wrestle upside down. But I mean, other than that, the colors and the, you know, I talked to my buddy, um, I think it was Mark. I'm not sure who it was. But one of my buddies, they they uh, watched NXT 2.0 for the first time, and uh, they said there are CGI humans. <laughs> I was like, "What?" And I never noticed before because, like, I don't care that much. But they 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 have giant video walls with fake people. <laughs> like, that's a pretty big addition. You know what I'm saying? Fake people. So anyway, I don't know what it's gonna look like. But they did do a, a remodel, a remake over whatever. It's going to be different, but it's not going to be like 
I'm told massively drastically different. But we will see a change. Well, thank God Mandy Rose is still there. Because nothing streams NXT than, more than Mandy Rose. Well, Mandy uh, Rose and Alba Fire. Can, are you ready? Are you ready for this, Brian? You know, you know she comes. She comes from a family of fire walkers or throwers or something. It's a fire something. It's not a fire yeah. walker. Mm. It's 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 the keepers of the flame. I think is the mm. way it was described. Which is like, listen, Alba Fire is a great talent. This gimmick is just—it's ridiculous. She she. Her name is Alba Fire, and like she she walks around with a torch. They did a, we didn't even talk about this. They did two angles on uh on NXT this week, okay? One of them, she was in the parking lot, and uh and it was funny because like Toxic Attraction's cutting a promo, and they cut to Alba and she goes, I'm not in a words, I'm in action. <laughs> and she actually she literally said, I'm not into words, I'm in actions. And then she throws down her torch as a keeper of the flame. And words! Yeah. Words appear in flame! And knew, it says. And I was like, I thought you weren't into words. It seems like you're really into words, because you lit words on fire right here as a, as a threat. So that was the first one. That was goofy. And a hashtag at that. I didn't even notice the hashtag. Yeah. Wow. It was a hashtag and knew. Okay. Well, then, then later in the show, this was my favorite. So they did some segment, and, and Toxic Attraction is out there, and then whoever the random baby faces are, it's like, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter. But they're, all, they're kind of yelling at each other. Like, there's, there's the one on this side and the one on this side, and they're yelling at each other. And all of a sudden, Alba Fire appears out of nowhere with her torch, and she goes, ba-bam, and this giant freaking wall of flame shoots between everybody, and even the baby faces almost get burned. And they're like, ah! And I was like, what? What? You're an arsonist? I don't get it. This is not my favorite uh, storyline. Oh, Alba my God. Fire. Oh, my God. I just thought about it. 15 extra minutes. 15 minutes that can be dedicated to Pretty Deadly. Oh, my God. Wrong show, geek. Oh, man. Dynamite is 15 minutes extra. Damn it. I need NXT to be 15 minutes extra. I've missed a few Fridays lately. It's a good thing I didn't miss this one. Mm. You're, you're not on your game. You're really pulling a to be Soraya on tonight. tonight. I'm ready doing. for it to be the weekend, to be honest with you. And I'm thinking about 15 minutes extra with Pretty Deadly. Of course, I'm also thinking if they did give NXT 15 extra minutes, well, it would be Toxic Attraction or somebody like that who would get that spot instead, and that would make me very unhappy. Roosh is now under a full-time deal with AEW. And yes, Bandito, after Wednesday, was immediately offered a full-time contract is that when tony jumped into his arms dude i'd have jumped into his arms after that match it was incredible and uh i don't know I just worry about him backflipping off the stage with me now it just says here that he was offered a deal i hope hopefully you signed because i i mean wwe was asking for his number like before that match was even over a man is in demand which begs the question like why was he not in demand before wednesday i don't think we needed wednesday to find out that bandito was great anyway back in a moment observer live Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. You know, Mike, a couple of yeah. uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was unavailable for this show, and you took over. Mm-hmm. Got nothing but bad reviews. But anyway, I was, uh, I was, uh, mm-hmm. I was actually being interviewed for this Vice TV documentary on Vince McMahon. Oh, yeah. Yes, I can admit it now. That's actually what I was doing. Documentary on Vince McMahon set to be released next month. Vice TV currently working on the project. According to a report from PW Insider, I love when they break my news. It will air sometime in October. Huh. Documentary will focus on McMahon's career, as well as the hush money scandal broken by the Wall Street Journal. It led to his resignation from WWE. Our own Dave Meltzer was interviewed for the film, the front page says. Yeah. And also me. Oh, yeah? Front page. Really? Yes. HBO Real Sports said to be working on the segment, on a segment focusing on uh, Vince McMahon. There's a lot of other ones as well. But, uh, I mean, it's possible I sucked and I won't be on it, but they did interview me for about two and a half hours, and I got to talk about uh, my favorite subject, the departure of Vince McMahon. Not you? 
That's what I thought your favorite subject was. The departure of me? No, just you in no, general. I don't you like, talking about you. I don't like talking about myself, Mike. You know that. Yeah, no, of course not. Yes. You know who also was interviewed for that? The Wrestling News' is Brian Solomon. You know who Brian really? Solomon is, don't you? I think I recommended him. Yeah, so for... <laughs> Former WWE magazine writer and... Fine man who wrote a fine book with the uh, the Sheik book, which if you're a, a fan of wrestling books at all, there's been a couple that have come out. Obviously, the Brian Gwertz book, uh, everybody's talked about that one. That's uh, pretty incredible. But if you like history, that Sheik book is really something else about a guy that really talked about keeping kayfabe alive until the end. Uh, the Sheik definitely tried to do that. And Vinny has driven all the way here, and his camera's not working. Oh, cool. Classic. It's pointing at the back of the TV. All Riveting. right. Yep. We go that way. Uh, nope. Wrong way, bro. 180 degrees oh. the wrong way. Oh. Yep. We don't need two cameras on me. Hey, oh, there yeah. he is. By the way, you need a good nose hair trimming. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.